Yeah. Uh, but there's a little bit of a delay. Okay. There's a little bit of a delay here, so we just have to wait for a few seconds. Okay. Uh, but I have a uh, I have my the setup looking okay for me. Uh, but I think we should be getting going very soon now, actually. So um there we go oh yeah we're on there there we go uh so i'm just going to change the view to gallery view okay perfect hi everybody uh thank you for joining us this is the yr world webinar series today we are joined by david goel is that correct how to pronounce yes, it david goel uh good stuff and you're joining us joining us from paris in france uh, so I'll let you introduce yourself now shortly, and we can have a quick chat about your career at the end, because I'm very interested in it. Uh, just to sort of start off and saying that, uh, we, first off, thank you to our sponsors, Jumping Rivers, who are uh, jumpingrivers.com. They are a UK-based data science and uh, training uh, consultancy, and they have been uh, great supporters of the R community and R user groups and Saturdays and stuff like that very consistently over the last few years. So we all I will appreciate their ongoing support. Just another thing actually is to sort of uh, say hello to all the R user groups who are joining us. We get great support from the London R user group, the Berlin R user group, the Barcelona R user group, Vienna. I'm sure there are other ones there as well. And they, they always tune in and uh, we also tune in to some of their events. And so it's always uh, great to sort of uh, have that camaraderie uh, from user groups all over the world, mostly the time zones in Europe and Africa, but all over the world. So one final thing is to uh, just actually ask on the chat, or we ask you to tell us where you're from. Part of the fun of this is really sort of seeing where the, seeing the extent of the R community. So in the YouTube chat, please let us know where you're from and tell us, give us a quick hello from Ireland or a quick hello from wherever you're from. It's sort of really great to see the extent of the R community around the world. And I think that is it. Sorry, questions and answers. Uh, if you have any questions and answers, please leave them in the questions and answer session in the in the chat session and uh, we'll uh, ask them all at the end. Uh, just as a sort of quick remark, uh, David is going to be joining us again next week for the officer package. So this is a, a two-parter, so to speak. And this is so the, there's a compliment complimentary uh, webinar next Thursday as well that sort of covers the same sort of material. David, I've been talking for ages. What I think I should do is let you to it. Okay. Okay. Hello. Thank you for having me here. Uh, thanks also to the sponsor, Jumping Rivers, for making art possible. I'm very happy to, to be here to chat about uh, Flex Table. Uh, it's a project I, I really like. So let's start. So quick, uh, quick words about me. So, so I'm the red uh, figure there, and I'm living with Constance, and we have Leonie, a young girl, and we have Gaspar, a young baby. Um, I like um, my hobby is to do some open source. So some of my popular open source are uh, GDRAF that make uh, ggplot interactive graphics. Um, officer on Office Down, we'll talk about them next week. On Flextable, we'll talk about it uh, today on Epic, which is not really popular, but uh, I needed an icon there. So I'm also the founder of R Data, which is a company based in Paris. So that's the work I do to pay the bill. So I'm working with Clementine on Panal Beauties. Uh, we are doing some package development some R deployment, some shiny development, a lot of things, some R training, and we're working also with, uh, with uh, computing uh, for, for creating scientific computing environment for, for our customer with Jupyter Urban R Studio. So that's all about me. Uh, let's start with Flextable, our real subject. So why did I wrote Flextable? So uh, 
table as as graphics are are a good medium to to synthesize uh, to present statistical summaries. Um, everybody know how to read a table. Sometimes people can have trouble with reading some innovative graphic, but table is kind of simple and everybody is used to read them. So I wanted, uh, so, so one of the motivation is my customer were always asking me for nice table, but sometimes it was Word or PowerPoint or HTML, not that much for PDF, but it was a recurrent uh, a requ requirement for to have a consulting. So as I like to code, I, I decided to, um, to write a tool that is easy to, 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 to manipulate and that was providing every option I needed to satisfy my customer and then the user when it became an open source. So this is my uh, summary of the Flextable package. If it's a, it's a summary now because I was working on different things. So, so Flextable for me, first it's an extensive formatting capabilities. You can change the color of the text. You can change the background of the cell. You can, uh, you can manipulate the format of the character of the paragraph on the cell. You can add some row, you can add some footnotes. You can do many, many things. You even mix some page, some text and image together in a cell. So I'll demo that a little bit later. Publication quality, that was an important thing. So though it was not there at the, in the first version, but now it's there. It's support for caption and cross-reference as provided by uh, our markdown syntax. This is very important to be compliant with that because everybody's using that technology now. So uh, everything can be coded. There is no copy past your table. If you want to have a real world output, you will get it with, uh, with our markdown without copying past and, and doing um, some, some actions that are error prone. Um, I'm very proud to see it uh, used by a lot of company like pharmaceutical company, Public Health Institute, CRO. Um, so to me, seeing customer and other people using it in, in big organization mean it's good enough to, to, to provide some official results. Uh, one point very important with Flextable is that it produces static table. Don't expect Flextable to provide some interactive uh, view of the table like DT, like DT is a package of, uh, of RStudio. It does not provide that, it's static table. So why? Because Word don't provide any dynamic view of table, PowerPoint neither. Um, only HTML uh, allows that, so, but that's not the point of Flextable. Flextable is producing only static table. Um, so the, the supported output, as I said before, are HTML, native Word, native PowerPoint, on LaTeX PDF. There are some support for images exports, but uh, I'm still not fully satisfied with it uh, because we are using um, WebShot or WebShot 2 that are, that are good, but um, maybe a real uh, output would be better than the transformation. And finally, I'm very happy to say that uh, it's now also a very good documentation. Uh, maybe there are still things to do, but if I look at the documentation of Flexible, now we have something organized in a book down with a lot of demo and explanation, a lot of code can be copied. So I remember someone, I don't remember who, but someone was saying on Twitter, uh, if you have no documentation, no matter how good your software is, it won't be used. So that's the point here is to be able to enrich and to have a good base, a good documentation, a base for the documentation. So 
the package is existing since uh, four years now. Um, to be honest, it's really good since uh, beginning of, of 2019, where I get rid of some uh, bad code and I uh, implement the correct way Compose, which is used for a lot of things. Um, mainly to mix different content. So since 19, uh, since uh, 19, uh, 219, it's it's a uh, it's a good quality software to me. So how it's working? So let's have a view at the first example. First, I'm creating a flex table with a data frame. So the main input of a data of of a flex table is a data frame. Then I'm adding some header, their air quality and their time. Air quality is uh, spanning four colon and time is spanning two colon. Then I apply a theme. I use the ID of ggplot. If this is uh, the same, uh, I, I liked uh, ggplot a theme function. So I try to, to do the same. And then add a footer line. So this is what we can see here. It's totally merged. There is no, it's, it's all, all the colon are spanned together. And finally, add a caption, this one. So let's do that in, in RStudio. So how it's working. So, okay, first I need to load the package. Um, Magritte, Magritte. So this is the first result. I add a line. I use a tem. I add a line of text in the footer. Then change the color there. I will color that in gray. And finally, add a caption. So this is was this is the first example of of flex table. As you can see there, it is displayed in the R Studio viewer. <coughs> so what you're seeing there is the HTML HTML output. That's important to know when you're using flex table. Um, Principle. So we have a few things to, to explain. So a flex table is composed of three parts. The most obvious part is the body, the body of the, of the, of the table. The body is containing the, the data of the data frame, of the input data frame. Then you have the header. The header is only, by default, is only containing the name of the column of the input data frame. You can add some row, but by default, there is only one row. And the footer is empty by default. You have to say, I want to add a line in the footer to get some, to get a result. And I just want to show you a shortcut. We will see selector later. And when you're using selector, to apply a format to some part, to some part of the table, you can use that shortcut, part equal all, mean apply the change to header, body, and footer. Okay, so when you start there, I'm doing that. It's intuitive, all the colon of the data frame are presented. But I could choose to not show all of them. I explain why later, because some colon may not to be displayed, but to be used for later calculation. So I can use the call key argument to not display all the colon or to add some space for colons that does not exist. So for example, that code will only display the colon, ozone, temp, months, and day. That sample of code with only display existing colon months, day on ozone, plus dummy, which is empty, but I can fill it with some free content later. 
or use it as a separator. So this is a call key argument. A lot of people don't use it, but be aware it can be used. Then we go to the to a very important concept with flexible. This is the selectors. The selector will let you apply a format, an operation to some specific row on colon, like we do in a conditional formatting in, in Excel. So there you can say, I want to apply the color orange. I want to, to put the font in a range where the row are ozone uh, is less than 40. So when ozone is less than 40, you select that row and you apply that color to colon ozone on solar R. So that's the result we can see there. So I don't recommend using formula for the, the colon selector, but I do recommend to use that, that, that the formula to create some, some conditional formatting. This is very easy to express. The only thing that annoy me is that uh, that till you have to put first. Um, I decided to use formula. It was easier to implement. Um, the selector can be can have different syntax. You can have the you can use different syntax to express the selector. So I just talk about this one, the formula one, but you can also use. Uh, only character vector for the column name, like here, or integer vector, like here it means the first three row and the third three column, and the first three column, or the, the, the logical vector. So that selector, and I will use that quite often. Um, something I should present is also selector are containing also the path argument. So you can decide to select only a part. Uh, let me show you on a quick example. So we will color. So let's change I will show you another function. So we will change the background of the row where uh, solar R is less than uh, 40. Okay. The G colon will be ozone. And the background colon will be red. So to highlight in red the selected color. I can also say, okay, but I want also the header to be color in gray. So that there, I won't choose any I or J or G. I will only use part equals header and BG equal yellow. Something I'm sure it will be very ugly. Okay, here it is. So part can be used as well in the selector. Cell contained. So what you're seeing there, is the same formatting that what you can see on the screen, on the, on the console. So I should set seed to, So not the same. Okay, anyway, <coughs> by default, you're seeing data display as in the console. So 21.06, blah, blah, blah. 21.06. This is a default formatting of R, but you can change that. You can change that. 
and apply, for example, a specific formatting to all the double colon. So let's use that. So I will um, format all the double colon, all the colon of type double with two digits. And um, I will change the big mark and the decimal mark because I'm French. I want some comma. We should never have that. And here it is. I can change all the numbers. So they are all double. They all have a comma as a, as a separator, decimal separator, and two, num two digits after the, the comma. So you have many functions like this to define the cell content. Call format double, call format int, char, that time, even image. So that's, that's only for, to define a cell with one content. Here we can, we only see what's in the data frame, but we could create, we could compose something more complex. So this is what I'm demoing there. I'm creating a flex table from the previous data set. And there, okay, I'm selecting only free colon. That's the call key I showed before. And there I'm using the function compose to create a paragraph, to create my, my paragraph. So I said in colon G, you will create a paragraph which will be composed of solar air, a parenthesis, and ozone formatted as both. And this make this display. There, I um, will only add this uh, red uh, superscript R. So it's, I do that that way. Create a paragraph with solar in italic, a space, and R in superscript, colorized with red. So compose is a real great function. Um, it lets you create some very complex content, like mixing um, image on, on, on text, for example. Then you have other, other feature that are not that known as flex table. It's a generic function. I'm very happy. I will talk about that later. But some extension use as flex table. Until now, it was mainly used by me. And I use it to create some uh, statistical, uh, uh, some table reporting for models. So for example, I'm creating that GLM model a probit one and I can see a bug there and there I'm producing the flex table from the model so everything is a so beside I'm using technique like broom or maybe I, I'm using broom I don't remember so let's have a look here in our studio so that's my model And that's the reporting table of the model. We have many features like um, header, on, header on footer. We can add some header and we can change them. So first, the first function to be aware of is set header labels. It change the, the call names. So it's better to use that function than to change the name of the data frame. Why would you change the name of the data frame? Uh, if it's only for displaying a flex table, use settler label instead, and it will reduce the, the hassle of the formatting. Um, so there I'm just saying, don't use solar.r, but use solar space r uh, long. And this is what we can see here. So it's always the bottom row. 
faire trop. Then, uh, before going on, just introducing a, a feature named set flex table default. As you saw, um, we can, okay, we will do a lot of work later. I will show you a lot of work and it's quite a annoying to, to always define the same parameters. So this function sex, set flex table defaults let you define the default uh, value for, for your tables. For example, all the table will be created with a default value of 10 points for the forms. Table will have, will have a padding of five points. The default font will be Arial. This is what we are seeing there. Um, also something I don't want to forget. Uh, you can even set the family for East Asia, uh, for world. So I'll show you later why this. But East Asia, people that are using uh, China, Korean or Japanese keyboard may, may need additional fonts when they are mixing Latin letter on, on, on letter for their own alphabet. So using set flex table default will help you uh, to, to, to define a lot of default properties. So let's have a look at the function. It's full of argument like default font family, default font size, default font color, uh, default padding, default background color. For example, I could say all the background color will be gray. And here it is, the default background is gray now. You can also add more row. So now, why I was talking about that? Because otherwise, if I'm adding row, um, I will have to reformat again the, 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 the last row added. So by setting this default value, I'm sure at least the font size on the font family is correct when adding the row without having to change it again later. So I'm adding some rows there. And as explained before, two, two colon measurement that will span four colon on time that will span two colon. So the name is add header row. There are other functions like add, add lines. You can add lines easily with add header lines or add footer lines. I'm only showing add header lines for now. So here I'm adding. Um, this is the first line, this is the second line in the table. So let's have a concrete example. So I'd like to thank Clementine. She's the girl that prepared that example for, for, for us. Um, it's a very nice one. So she liked to play Mario Kart. Um, she knows uh, the, she wanted to, to expose the statistics of the character. So on Mario Kart, there are some statistics that are difficult uh, to watch when you're choosing the, the character. So she finds um, the data set collected by the, the fan of the game. And she created a data frame for that. And we'll do the flex table corresponding to that. So this is the expected result. So what do we have? We have some name with some color associated to the name. We have some, we have two row in the header. And we have one figure, one, one, uh, one number after the comma, after the decimal. And also we highlighted those were uh, the higher score in the in the um, in the colon. So if you want to play, I would advise you to use, for example, baby pitch. So how is um, how is the code? Cool, it's working. So I have the code there. 
So let's open it in um, in RStudio and let's review that code. I improve Make that bigger. So loading some libraries, setting flex table the default values to Arial 9 because there are a lot of colon, so I must reduce the font size. Small padding and one digit as we saw on the screen. So these are the data Clementine processed. And let's have a look at, 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 at the data set. So we have the name of the character. We have some uh, numerical uh, colon. Also, we have some specific colon that have been added later after the, 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 the importation. So the image corresponding to the character, this is a full pass and the full pass. So if I go to static asset image, Mario, here are all the image. The color associated to the title and the star, if we want to associate a star with it. So the star is, um, why is star coined? Okay, this is a specific symbol in the end. So how did she build the table? So first, she isolate the, the colon she wanted in the data in the flex table. So these are the colon she want plus character. So this is the first version. Ah, okay. We need flex table default. Okay. We're back to default. Up. So this is a basic flex table. Okay, now let's change these labels. These are the colon name, these are the computing names. Let's put some human names. So here are one part of the work, plus adding category above this line. So here's like the category, but we're missing some border information. So while we are developing, I will use the term box. Term box is the term that add border all around your table. So it's when developing, it's a good term to use as you can see all the details of the cell. So this is the Merchel above the header lines. Let's go on. And then we will use compose. Then you will understand why Kalki is existing because I don't want to use the color or the image. Remember, image is a path of the image. I don't want to, to see that in the table. So I didn't display it, but I still can use it with compose function, for example. So this is my table there. And let's launch the, the compose function. It will create the first column where the name of the character will be colorized on bolted on made bolt plus the image located in my directory. So let's run that. Okay, this is the first nice result. I have the I have the colon formatted as expected. Now let's go on. Okay, I don't need that one because of the default value. Uh, will you? Oh yes, I need it. And I will use the term zebra. I will change the color. Change the color of the header to white and align everything, everything to write. 
So let's run. And this is the first version. So uh, Chrome is sometimes showing some bizarre effect. Okay, this is our table. Now we miss the coins to show where uh, where the row, which row is the highest. So this is a loop. This is a stupid loop. For each colon, I'm creating a formula. It's not very nice. I will try to improve that later. And in the end, I run autofit to automate to to autofit the to to set the width of the colon to the maximum size uh, it should have. The optimum size. Um, this is the result. So yeah, here is the result. So you can, so I leave the material on, on GitHub so you can you can play with the code later if you want. It's only, it's only, it's for from line 14 to line 46, 47. Okay. Oh, my last presentation. So we have a rough idea of how to create a flex table. There are many options, but how to add them to a document. Most of you are really interested by the word outputs. I know. I like the HTML output, but I know most of my public is interested by the world one. So you have different techniques with officer technology, with Armadon, or with some simple tool. Let's start with officer technology. So we can, by using body at flex table, we will use, we will send that flex table into a docx document and then I, I will detail that next week. And then I'm saving the, the, the document in Mario Officer DocX. So what is the rendering of that? So Mario Officer DocX. Okay. It's not that nice because um, it should go in a, in a landscape format. The table is too wide. This is the PowerPoint version. Okay. As in Word, it's a D table. So to, to export in PowerPoint, you create a PowerPoint object, you add a slide, and you add the flex table with the function placeholder with. Fill the placeholder with that flex table at the default location, which is the body one. You have also a lot of tools for easy exportation. Some of you don't want to use our markdown or officer, they just want to have the table and do the stuff somewhere else. So that's an example of save as docx. It's not really. So save as docx. Oh. We'll save the table here in this report and it has option like change the section change the default section so when i'm doing that i'm creating mario.docx and there the section is is in landscape it's better it 
you can save as peer PowerPoint also. You can plot the flex table. As I said before, I'm not fully satisfied. This is based on, on, on the screenshot. Okay, but this is a plot, it's in the panel plot. And something I like to use when I'm developing, it's a print preview equals docx. So you can print the flex table in docx and it will pop up on your computer. You will be able to check exactly how it looks like in Word. Same for pptx. And same for HTML, but there, this is r viewer. So this and this is exactly the same. And now with the R Markdown technology. So the usual way is not that complicated. You only have to use to put the name of the object, FT, and it will be print uh, in the standard way. But if you are in a loop um, in R for while on repeat loops, always return null. So nothing will be printed in, in meter. So you need <coughs> to change the strategy. You need to, to use the chunk option result equal as is and the function flex table to RMD. So, Let's have a look at that. So this is my 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 document. Uh, yeah, it's not Mario Kart. It's uh, air quality. Oh. I just have to use FT, and it will be printed uh, as it is in Word. or in PDF. I have a warning to get rid I need to get rid of a warning. Or oh, HTML as well. Okay, so that's how you print the table. It's not that complicated. What are the last advance, the unknown feature? So what I've been working on these last months on, on flex table. So oh, so the first the first things I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, it's a lot of work. I was um, I was spending a lot of time in explaining things to people on Stack Overflow, GitHub. I had a lot of questions. So I decided to, to, to realize that my documentation was not good enough. So I rewrote something better in a book down. Now people can um, um, search for keyword. Um, it's, I have, it's very, it's much more easy to, to present the, the example. It's more natural for the user. So I have a new documentation, which is huge. There is a lot of, and it's still not over. There's still a lot of things to show, but there are a lot of code example, a lot of explanation. So that's, that's a big work that I've been done. So we cannot really see there, but Clementine, uh, my colleague is preparing a cheat sheet, a cheat sheet also. So it will be soon available. A um, lot of work have been done on cross references and caption. So now I think it's uh, far better. We have fully support for book, full support for book down and for our markdown. So let's have a, a short demo. So. Egal. Mm. 
Okay, I'm going to open that. So we are now, uh, this, this is, uh, these are the caption, but as you can see, there is a real bookmark on, on, on it. Um, there are real link. Uh, let's have a, I, I, I'll answer later maybe. Um, so to set caption, auto number caption on, on, on Word, I'll show you in the, in the package, it's more easy. You have to define some chunk option. So let's go in flex table. Oh, time is running. Okay, I will show that in the end because I'm I'm on the wrong pass. I'll show that in the end. So in the doc, I documented everything. These are all the features you can change in the caption. You can change the style of the caption. You can change the prefix of the caption. Um, you can define the bookmark of the caption. So it's tab.id, but if you're in a book down, use label. This is a standard way of doing things with book down. PDF output, uh, this is quite new. Uh, overall it's good, but there are still things to improve, um, particularly on the width on height concept. Uh, it's not yet implemented and I'd like to, to have a better control over, over it. I'm not sure it's possible. I don't have many feedback on, on that. I'm not sure it's used by user. We'll see. Um, the code is less verbose now, thanks to set flex table default. But also I have added a function, an option in Compose named use dot that allow to use the dot as the current column. So now it's much more easy to, to avoid loop, to, to, to do the same operation along different columns. So let's have a better demo. Okay. Something is broken, sorry. I don't know, ah, oh, data table. So this bit of code, will create that table with some bar plot for each column. So I'm applying the ggchunk function, which is a stupid function that just return a ggplot with a void theme. And in a list column, I'm applying this function to the data set. So here is data set. You can see the dimension. And here are the list column. This contains the ggplot object. And then I just have to say plot it with 8, 15, dot 15 inch and one inch long. And this is what we see here. So this work also. Uh, in Word. So this is my Word document. Okay. Uh, 
I, will, I, I don't have much time left. I, I guess I need to keep time for question. Um, you can use uh, flex table as a default table output. This is the bit of code I'm using in my presentation to default to flex table display. So if I print a data frame, flex table will be the function that will transform the data frame in table in my RMD. Uh, there is more support for um, for CKG alphabet. Yeah, that's okay. So here you can see this is. I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Chinese or Korean, but we are using another font. And there, this is Latin, and I am using the Arial font. So I have added recently support for that. This is, I think, a very good feature. Uh, manual are containing illustration also. I'm, I have improved a lot uh, the, the, the documentation, but also the manual. Oh, not pure. Also, the manual of the documentation. So, if I open the manual inside our studio, I can see an illustration of the code that is in example. So, that's the usual rendering. We have now some diff, some package that are um, creating output flex table compatible. So flex table extra, it's a very good package that enable to define some air markdown in your data frame and it will be transformed. So that's not a feature of flex table, but this is really useful using air markdown in flex table. So flex pivot, it's uh, to create content G table, GT summary that is quite popular, cross table that is quite new. Uh, that looks like a little bit uh, GT summary. It's a very nice uh, output and very nice uh, API. The, the, the syntax is, is quite appealing. Um, compare group on the other package. So we don't have that much time. I guess I may need to keep time for question. Um, let's finish quickly. So maintenance and support. Uh, I can go back to there later if there is some time, but FlexTable is actively maintained. And we keep are going. Generate... I actually am interested in this, so I'll let you keep okay. going there. Okay, okay, okay. So maintenance and support. So we tried, I tried to 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 send user on Stack Overflow to gather question. Um, I'm not sure it was that much a good idea, but there is a lot of users that are using that now. And I'm trying to help and to answer uh, when I when I can, which means when there is an answer. I'm I'm always giving an answer if possible. Sometimes if I don't have answer, I'm not answering. But I'm I'm quite active on Stack Overflow. Um, if you have a bug or a feature request, try to you can open a, an issue on Flex Table. Um, I'd like one thing is that user always add their session info on a reproducible example. But also why uh, I made progress on, on, on handling that. It's, it's difficult when you have a lot of issue open sometimes. But now it's, it's far better. And how the maintenance is organized. So question uh, will, uh, if, if the question has no answer, uh, I will create an, an answer in the documentation. That's what we happen now. The bugs, the bugs are always fixed, I think. Um, usually within a month. Some bugs are long, uh, long, much more long time. It took much, it took me a lot much longer time for, for some bugs, but 99, 99% are, are solved in the during the month. And evolution are always welcome, but we cannot have a time commitment on that uh, because it's sometimes a lot of work. Uh, 
So for example, I want to add new feature, for example, RTF output, this will be huge work if at least five or six days of, of my work. I want to be able to add a append and prepend in cell. That is taking a lot of time. So that's why there is no real time commitment. We try to do the, the best we can. Um, I have a pass to version 1.0. Um, I want to add uh, some lot of visual testing and I will work a lot on that soon. So I've started to create a package that is converting Word PowerPoint document on PDF on miniature. And I will use this miniature to, to, to as a basis for the, the visual testing. So not yet implemented, but to me, that's a very important task because I need to, to be sure no regression will happen. Uh, I need to make the, the, the package more robust. Uh, I need to add some, some manuals to add a gallery of example. Um, and I need to, to work a little bit on the, on the size when using the image, especially in, a, in, in HTML. So that's a, that's a, that's a roadmap. Um, and thank you. I, in the end of the presentation, you should, uh, you should get a link to the, to the material on, on the presentation. So if you have any question, I'm happy to answer. Sorry. I'm there are a few it. questions indeed. So okay. I'll just go through them here at the start. So I'll start off with a couple of the questions from the YouTube. Just to sort of remark, first off, that there is quite a few thank yous in there. They're not questions that they're sort of congratulations and thank yous for all the... Uh, somebody sort of said, Christian LH, uh, hi, David, can I say a massive thank you for your packages? You saved me so much time, days of my life. Now, the question is here, this is the first actual question. Do you know if PowerPoint will ever allow images in a flex table? No, this is not possible because this is not possible in PowerPoint. If I am opening, is it still there? No, oh yeah. If I am opening something here in the flex table, I can add uh, any image, it won't work, it will be Okay, where is my navigator? Okay, wait one second. I need an image. Look, this is flex table logo. Okay, it does not work. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is a screenshot, stupid screenshot, but this is a PNG. Okay, where is my, P okay, it's there. So I can't, put there here, it's somewhere else. This is a feature of PowerPoint. PowerPoint don't allow the mix of image and text. Okay. It drove me mad, it really drove me mad. <laughs> we can only wish. Okay. Uh, Regis O'Connor, uh, again, uh, she says, uh, 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 the, the, this is uh, fabulous, uh, David and Clementine, thank you. Are there any limitations to the uh, like uh, to the reliability of the fonts? For example, in ggplot, there are only three fonts that are reliable. What is fonts? Uh, like Calibri and Cambria and Ariel. No, there is no limitation. Um, the font are used from the system. The system font are used, and and the user is expected to have the same font. Sorry, that's the way it's working in, in Word. That's why they're installing Gigabyte on, on your computer. So if you want to see all the available, I recommend you, Thomas Lynn Peterson. I hope I won't. This is the way we should say his name. Um, system fonts. Uh, Sys fonts. Okay. So with that bits of code, you can see all the available fonts on your system. And you can use the, the colon family. This is the family colon you should use with flex table or. Good stuff. Uh, the next question is from Matchek. Uh, heat maps can be hard to arrange. Uh, are there any problems with heat maps being uh, displayed inside the table? 
Um, inside the table, no, you just uh, add, the, add the heat map in the table. I would just say it's the, the width on, of the colon on the row could be a difficult part. So uh, it's better to, to use a hash rule, which means uh, uh, horizontal uh, rules at least uh, a minimum eight, something like that. So uh, in the in the documentation, there are some example. Uh, okay. Start with that. Uh, as a question from Stephen Duff, and something I'm going to add to it as well, or sort of, my table is often too wide. Any tips for getting the table to fit in a Word document, like, for example, reducing word size? I believe that there is a, 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 a column. Okay, yeah, there's a couple of options there. You can also specify the width of the columns, I believe. Yes, you can specify the width of the column. Yeah. Um, this is, I think, the best option. Yeah, okay, yeah. But sometimes you have to produce a hundred of uh, tables. So, so yeah, you don't know for sure how yeah. it's going to turn out. So that's not that's not art. Okay. Better than nothing. So yeah, yeah. You have this table on fit to width. You yeah. say max width equals four inch. And yeah. You will try to reduce the table to this width, but reducing also the font size on the padding. Okay, yeah. So uh, just, I don't, I don't have better than that. For okay, yeah, yeah. There, there, so there are a column uh, with options as well. Just actually as a remark, if you, uh, when you add it to a word document, can you align the text like for align left? Or is that an option? Yes. Um, yeah. It's a uh, align. The function is align. Okay. Um, yeah, I so recommend. Okay. I really recommend to to dive into, not to dive uh, during a day, just a few minutes, but you know, you, you're you going, for example, to format. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you should see uh, the diff, all the classical operation. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I, I, that's, the, that's the correct way to do it because you actually do have a lot of good examples there and good documentation there. So I think actually you're right. That's the best way to go at it, just to sort of let yourself explore it and because I do feel that you have a lot of material there, and I think people should be able to yeah. practice and pick it up. As, as, as suggested by, by Miles Salmon uh, last week, I will create a gallery. A gallery oh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I, I yeah. think I, I have a few examples that I can give you. Okay, uh, just okay. something, actually, I, this is something I sort of, uh, that took me a while, actually, just to sort of uh, clarify this. This is a question I already asked you previously. But when we're talking about column keys, that's not the same as select. That's no, it's just column it's keys, column keys e are the displayed column. Yeah, okay. So it's not like select and deep player. It's only for you picking these, but the other ones yes. still exist. Still exist and still can be used with compose function, for example. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's something that threw me because I just uh, immediately sort of made it this um a, 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 an equivalence between the two, but that's actually not the case. So that even if you do have call keys, other uh, variables that are not selected can still be, are still active there yes, and still can still be called. Still yeah, can be yeah. used, which is very useful. Yeah. Uh, just a sort of quick question, actually. Something I would use a flex table for would actually be text cells with text in them and cells with paragraphs. Have you, have you just had to use any of those examples? Uh, cells with different uh, different lines. Yeah, uh, like paragraphs this, of document. Uh, yeah. Only one paragraph. I was very rigid about that uh, before. There is there's only one paragraph, but okay. they support for uh, uh, backslash n and backslash r and backslash yeah. t. So they support for that. Um, yeah. I I, um, I I do have cells that have paragraphs, but actually, correctly, there are multiple cells. Uh, but what I have done is made the appearance of them looking like a single cell using the uh, border commands. Just make border. Ah, okay. So just okay. in case anybody has to sort of uh, work with that, that's a sort of a workaround. And it's actually very neat from a coding point of view. Um, yes. Just actually, uh, sorry, I'll just see if I have one more. I uh, was one more question there. Uh, 
something I would work on myself is actually uh, use a flex FT extra, which is a markdown document. So just actually, can you just give a quick minute of that? I think that yeah. I think just that that is a useful complement to a, a call format. Yeah, it's very good. Um... I had to, to make a pull request there, but it's a very good work and I'm very happy to have that contribution, that new yeah. package. So, uh, okay, there, there's the example. Yeah, yeah, so that there's a... Uh, I'm looking for something. Uh, okay, here, this yeah. one is okay. So bold, italic, bold, italic, Superscript, subscript, this is what he's doing, and it's it's quite good. It's rely yeah. on, on common markdown, so yeah, like yeah. a lot. It's very good work. Uh, it's there are other interesting things, and I I, I think is uh, I think the package will evolve uh, with reference work about reference, for example, uh, bibliography. Yeah. Um, the just actually sort of about the the, the the development of the officer and flex table because just to remind everyone that there is a, a counterpart package called officer which creates word documents and that flex table from my point of view anyway is a sort of complement of that and just actually and I think it's very useful because a lot of people in their working environment in report generation and document generation they still have to use word. Uh, just actually, what is your market like? Do you know who your who the people who use these packages, yes. like what their uh, use cases are? In my case, it's like uh, government regulatory reports. Yes, um, I'm working for L'Oréal, for example. They're using the, the product to create some uh, huge uh, um, clinical uh, annexes that nobody will never read, but are full of table. Um, the Ministry of Health in France is using it a lot with COVID-19 uh, crisis and um, Sanofi, AstraZeneca, they're using it uh, for their clinical, uh, clinical reporting. I know some, a lot of people, it's funny because I have also another, another, some other type of company like marketing, they are only interested in PowerPoint. Yeah. So, I know some insurance company or marketing company are sending automatic PowerPoint to their, to their, to their customer, but there is more B2B and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope they sort of help, uh, support the R community in some way or sort of, you know, uh, to sort of as a, as a way of saying thank you for your work. Uh, just actually, that's because I, I realize it's a lot, you put a lot of time into that this package, actually. And it's just yeah. sort of, uh, I think a lot of people in the R community uh, are, are, are very thankful for the efforts you put in. I know I am. Um, so I just actually, sorry, I just saw one more question there from uh, Jacek. Sorry if I don't pronounce that. Are GG plot objects possible within FlexTable in PowerPoint? And if so, can they be inserted in vector format? Uh, no. Uh, it, 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 you can you can add some ggplot in PowerPoint, but not in FlexTable. FlexTable in PowerPoint, yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's not FlexTable. Table okay. in PowerPoint. You can have a, yeah, you uh, can have it as a separate item. No, yeah. No. Uh, again, uh, so the just a, it's a sort of, he, he also says, sort of uh, uh, sends his thanks. Um, I think that's it. So I think that, I think that we've hit all the marks there. Thanks. Well, thanks very much, David. Uh, Dami, even how, uh, we hope we're, we're I'm delighted to, that you're going to be joining us again next week, where you're going to be talking about Officer, and yeah. it's both both Flex Table and Officer are two packages I use a lot, and I big I'm a, now a big evangelist for uh, them, and anybody who's a sort of career young data scientist definitely worth spending a, a few hours learning all of this and using all of the documentation and examples you've used or created. And hopefully we'll have a few contributions for your gallery, which is a great idea. But I think we'll leave it there. Uh, just to, before we close off, uh, we'll sort of uh, thank, thank David, thank our sponsors, Jumping Rivers, uh, who have been uh, great supporters. And we hope to see you all next week. So that's it. I think we'll leave it there.
Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm going to switch off now. Bye-bye, folks. Bye. Now, I'll just check if that's done. I don't know. It's gone. Well, I'm going to leave the meeting here.